It's not your grandfather's space anymore. The final frontier is getting new pioneers. What makes this next era of space activity so different is that it's being run by entrepreneurs and private companies rather than governments. This competition is establishing space as a new, highly profitable marketplace. Actually, space exploration began in the 1950s under highly competitive circumstances. Unfortunately, it was a war, the Cold War, some called it, between the two most powerful nations on Earth, the United States and Russia. A war of threats and displays of power, one of the most famous occurring in 1957, when America was caught off guard by Sputnik, a basketball-sized Soviet-made satellite that began orbiting the planet, beeping an ominous signal to Americans that they were neither the first nor the technological leaders in space. President Eisenhower responded by starting NASA, which retaliated by launching a U.S. satellite called Explorer, and the race for space was on. By 1961, a few heroic dogs and chimpanzees later, the competing superpowers began sending men into space. Short test flights, then longer and longer orbits, prompting President Kennedy to set the stakes for the competition even higher. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. And in 1969, right on schedule, American Neil Armstrong landed on the moon and the intense race for space was over. Curiously, ironically, the same government that provided the vision and money for the moon mission still couldn't provide its people a more modern telephone. Although, by that time, in their defense, they had just added area codes. So, what was next for the future of manned spaceflight? Looking ahead from 1969, it seemed as though it had no limits. Looking back, some might say it's been underwhelming. Colonel Richard Searfoss, veteran of three space shuttle missions, explains. Hi, Scott. You know, it was a, an incredible privilege for me to uh, pilot two shuttle flights, command a third. At the same time, uh, over the course of that uh, nine years in the astronaut corps, I recognize that just by the very nature of being a government organization, things sometimes more, move more slowly. It's more difficult to get things accomplished. It's just the nature of the beast. It's no secret that when the space race ended, the competitive edge went dull, and the government reverted to business as usual never recapturing the space program's early momentum. How to restore it? Maybe the answer is to go back 100 years to the beginning of the airline industry. It's hard to imagine that the friendly skies started with a dare of sorts, a small contest with a large cash prize. 